Hey guys, Casey Foster here from netcodeguides.com doing a demo review here for Terry G on his ESEA DE Cash match or scrim, um, <clears throat> whatever one it is. He says in his description, on CT side, I usually play solo B site and I tend to play really passive. I'm new to team play in CSGO, so I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. A few times I get overwhelmed at B because I peak too late. Could you give me some tips on how to hold B better solo and maybe what I should do to improve on, or should do, do to improve? So I can see your guys' setup. You guys are playing two mid, two A. Uh, looks like there's still a car. Maybe one of them will go to site and your solo B. Um, so just to preface something, Counter-Strike is a very team-oriented game. You are going to be affected by what your teammates do. Obviously, you can maximize your personal play style to play off of how your teammates play, but in an end result, you need to have good teamwork to win matches. Obviously, this is a match or a scrim, an organized game um, in some sort where everybody is in mumble, so everybody should be communicating. So, first mistake to holding B bomb site. You're jumping off of the ledge uh, directly in line with the right side of this uh, B main and you're attempting to peek down B hallway um, into main. The, be the better way to do that is to run to the left on the ledge and drop down so that you're far enough back looking into B main that you have time to run away before they can overwhelm you. <clears throat> and it's also faster so you can see down B hallway as well. Um, this is not what happens. You slowly, you jiggle peeked, and then you went back, and then now you're full peeking, and you see a player here. So you're very close to the B hallway here, and you're going to spot this guy and then try and run away. And they are so close to you that by the time you've turned around, a dude could have already got at least one, if not two shots off on you right here because you were so close to them. If you were further back and underneath heaven, uh, CT heaven, you could have just run directly to headshot where you're at right now and there would have been no chance of them shooting at you because you would have been in the site already. <clears throat> Another mistake, sorry for the cough. Another mistake is what you've bought on pistol round. So CT side pistol round. You're going to want some flashes, a kit, one flash, one smoke, and a kit, a nade, and a flash, and a kit. You want to buy some kind of equipment. You're, you're buying armor is pretty much pointless. The terrorists buy armor, as you can see. The other guys have armor. It's a much better buy on T side to buy armor than it is on CT. So if you would have had some kind of equipment and not bought armor here, you would have been in a much better situation to delay them into the B bomb site. So your teammate is flanking vent here. Um, you should be calling B, 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 B. Um, you've definitely heard at least three of them, and you're seeing one right now. And if you would have had some kind of equipment, a nade, a flash, you would have delayed them, possibly done a whole bunch of damage. If you dropped a nade when you spotted one of them at the corner, they're going to run right into the nade or a Molotov or a flash or a smoke. Anything other than armor is going to put you in a better situation in this round. You've fallen back to headshot box. Um, at this point, your best option is to just try and hide and try and crouch behind this ledge and or just try and get up in sight and delay them from getting into the site and playing the box and playing your cover. Uh, but instead, you get headshot by this dude jumping with the Glock. He's actually doing a really good job. He's doing that on purpose. He's not jumping to try and hit you. He's trying to jump to try and bait your bullets because you're going to constantly be shooting at this guy. He's jumping in the air. You're going to hit him in his leg, his chest, not do much damage. And obviously, he's messing up the hitbox uh, while jumping, so you're not going to get a headshot off on him and kill him. So he's doing a really good job of jumping. And then you just get overwhelmed by the side here, and they get an easy kill on you. They're in the site. Your player vent is killed by Nex as well. And now they've got the bomb site. 5v3. Bomb's getting planted immediately. Um, what you needed to do, like I said, walk to the left side of the upper ledge. Um, drop down. Spot deep. Uh, you had the wrong equipment that you bought on pistol round. You needed a nade, a flash, a smoke, something other than what you did buy. Um, and you would have had much better results. You would have been able to delay them. You would have been able to do some damage. You would have been able to flash them and get into sight and get into a better position. Uh, to fight them when they're hitting the site. Um, yeah, and, and give that a shot on the next time you play a CT pistol round on cash. All right.
And here we are on the second gun round. So notice you threw the smoke and you throw a flash. There's a minute 32 left in the round. Your teammates got a kill on, I think, the mid player? No, no, the A player. I don't know where he was at. Either way, you're in a 4v5. Um, first two seconds of the round, you didn't hear anything, you didn't see anything, and you burned the smoke in a flash. Uh, let's just keep going with that. We're just going to um, keep a mental note of that. So we're going to speed it up a little bit. As you can see, the T's are regrouping and coming back to B. So your position's fine. Playing headshot, peeking in and out around this box is a good play. Um, so like I said, keep a mental note of not having the smoke and the flash at this point. And they're obviously coming back to hit a B play here. Your teammates don't see anything on the other side of the site. You're hearing this guy running right now. And still hearing him, still hearing him, and you're not reacting. This is a problem. So for better to better hold B, when you're hearing those guys and you're seeing these smokes being thrown right here, you need to react in some way. You have a Molotov and you have a flash. When you see those smokes come in, you can pretty much guarantee that there's going to be an execute happening there. Your teammates got a kill on A. They've rotated back. You heard at least two or three people, and you're seeing two smokes. Your teammate is pushed up mid. He would hear them if they were running back to A. This is a team call. Hey, guys, they're hitting B. Here's some smokes. Even if your teammates don't react, you need to react. You need to be throwing a Molotov into B main. You need to be flashing into B main. Or if you would have had your equipment that you burned in the first five seconds of the round, you would have been able to throw a smoke in that area over there and delay them and then throw a flash and delay them even more for your teammates to rotate. <clears throat> Um, you do a pretty good job here getting at the site and you Molotov to, to checkers. So that's a good Molotov. That's going to eliminate the guy pushing straight through checkers and shooting you in the left side. Um, again, you have all the time in the world. They've mollied site here. You know, they're hitting it. You still have one flash. I would have liked to have seen you throw a Molotov or not a Molotov flash, sorry, a flash off of the wall to delay them and peek after the flash to maybe get a kill. Um, instead, you're dropping back down to headshot. This is pretty much where everybody looks in every situation when they're hitting B-bomb site. There's going to be one person pushing the site. There's going to be a dude in checkers watching the vent play. And there's going to be a guy checking headshot box and then CT spawn or upper. And you drop down, you get headshot. Now your teammates are in a 4v4. They've got a player in the site with the bomb. You're dead. You had a flash. You could have delayed them a little bit more. That is a problem. You need to... You needed to react. You needed to throw a flash. You needed to delay them. This is a big thing. A lot of people play Counter-Strike for the frags. And a big part of playing solo sites or just playing a site in general is delaying the strategy. And if delaying the strategy means delaying them into the site, doing a little bit of damage, flashing them, you know, throwing a smoke and making them go around what their original strategy was, you're going to have a much better chance of winning the round. So give that a shot next time. Use that Molotov. Use that smoke. Don't burn your stuff in the first five seconds of the round unless you are unless you see something or you hear something. Or if you're going to throw that smoke down B main, do something with it. Go into, go into checkers. Get up close. Try and get some information. Maybe peek around the smoke. If you watch a lot of the pro teams play, that's what they'll do. They'll throw a smoke, and they'll go peek around the smoke to get some information to see if the bad guys are there. And then they'll be like, okay, there's no one here, guys. Nothing is outside B. There's going to be players elsewhere on the map. And that, you know, Counter-Strike, again, is a very uh, informational-based game. So it's just not in your best interest to burn those smokes and flashes in the first five seconds of the round unless something's going on. All right, and this is more of a situational kind of thing. So your teammates got some kills in mid. They they still know that there's a guy there. Um, you get some trade kills. Now, your teammate died, obviously. Or, sorry, your teammate just got a kill on an A main player. He's called that the bomb is down. You're in a 3v2, you're in a 3 on 2, the bomb is down A main. You know Your teammate knows that there's still at least one more mid because they just killed him. And you've thunderfooted into this position. You've just straight up run. So the bomb is down, and you know that there's some in mid. There's no reason to run to this position. So like I said, this is more of a situational kind of thing, but this is called situational awareness. You need to be more aware of where bad guys can be. And you just thunderfoot right into this guy's posi this his spot, He's staring at you, and you wide peek. You didn't clear uh, a uh, mid main garage. You didn't clear the boost spot. You didn't clear the white box, and he gets an you know an easy frag on you. Like I said, take your time. Be a little bit more aware of what the situations are. The bomb was down. There was no need to run anywhere. 
even if you walked and they killed your teammate, there was 23 seconds left, they had to get the bomb and run to the site. The best case scenario, they're going to have 10 seconds left and you're still walking. You're in a 1v1 on the guy in the bomb site. So situational awareness is a big thing. Take a little bit more time, walk in situations, and just be a little bit more aware of where people can be and uh, 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 adjust your play style to that. So the other guys have won a bunch of rounds here now, and you decide to get a little aggressive on a B play here. Totally fine. You threw the smoke. I actually talked about this a little earlier in the video. Throw the smoke, throw a flash, get a little information. You obviously hear the guys. They're flashing you back. You're still a little aggressive. You have a teammate in vent, and this is actually a good play. But there's a small mistake afterwards. So you get a kill. You're falling back, blah, 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 blah. Totally fine. At this point, you've got a Molotov and you've got a flash. You know that there's going to be more players there because they're smoking upper and they're still they're still flashing the site. I would like you to I would like to have seen you turtle in sight, run to the back behind the box to your left, get cover, or run straight at this point and get behind these first boxes here and just give yourself some cover to where the terrorists have to push you. Obviously, your upper is smoked off a bit and you do have a guy CT, but he's not shooting and you have a guy vent. So. There's no reason for you to die in this situation. You want to basically set up crossfires in every situation that you can. When your CTs or your CT spawn player is going to shoot at this guy, the terrorist is going to return fire. Then you basically peek out when you hear your teammate shooting, and then you shoot the guy in the side of the head, and you guys win an easy 2v1 on that one player right there. Um, instead, you decide to peek out right here. He gets a nice headshot off on you. Your teammates are cleaning up, but it wasn't necessary for you to die. Every opportunity you get in Counter-Strike, you want to set up crossfires. That was absolutely one of them. Um, and you got a pick and you fell back. That was a great job. But peeking again, trying to get that second kill, it wasn't necessary. So Counter-Strike is a game of calculated risks. That risk was not worth it in a 4v5 situation. All right. And here we are on your T side. This is your guys' first gun round. You guys are in a 3v3 situation. Great opportunity to take B here. Your teammates throw a decent um, smoke on CT spawn. And there's a Molotov on the triple stack and B bomb site. So there's pretty much one place that the CT can be in the bomb site. And he would have been basically behind that triple stack box right there or to your, to your left. And you didn't really clear anything coming into the site. Your teammates threw a smoke spawn and that's it. And a Molotov in the bomb site. You need to clear. Obviously, there wasn't anybody checkers. Uh, they had been cleared out basically a little bit early in the round. But you turned your side of your body to one of the most commonly played spots on the B in cash, basically. You can pretty much guarantee there's always going to be somebody upper. CT spawn was, spoke, was smoked off. You don't have to worry about that. But you've turned yourself to the guy at CT upper. He got a free frag on you. There, there was no real rush to that, to, to getting into the bomb site. Because the Molotov was in the site, that's going to force the player out of that position and basically to the back left of the corner of the site. So if you would have stayed in that little pit that you're at right there and peaked heaven, you would have had the fight with that guy. You maybe would have done some damage. You maybe would have got, some, got a kill. More importantly, you would have got knowledge as to where one of the players was at. There was no need. There's 44 seconds left. You guys have the bomb. 3v3 situation. Perfect opportunity to take your time, clear the site, and... It's just a, one of those things, again, just situational awareness. You just have to clear all of the positions in the maps efficiently uh, with good crosshair placement, good positioning of your body, and just being aware as to where bad guys can be. All right, and here we are on another gun round. You guys have a, a little A play set up here. You have a guy with you in A main and a guy at door. Bomb's just chilling in mid, not sure what he's really doing. But your door player and you are doing an A site execute. One problem that I see here is the timing as to which he comes out of door and the timing as to which you come out of A main. So this is a bit of a team thing, obviously, and communication is key in Counter-Strike and really would have helped you guys in this situation. But he comes out of door a good three seconds, two seconds before you come out of A main. The Krill guy gets an easy kill on Mercs and has all the time in the world to reset and readjust his aim and you come out and try and get the trade kill but so much after your teammate that you're putting yourself in another 1v1 situation uh, you get aim punched here you're pretty much uh, dead at that point but what needs to happen is anytime you're executing like that 
with with another player is your main goal is to get a trade frag. So your teammate came out door. You're basically your main job is to get the trade kill on that guy that killed him, and or you guys will basically shoot that guy at the same time, and you guys will kill him, and he won't kill anybody. Um, but what happened is you came out a little late, and he got an easy 2K because you guys weren't your timing wasn't on, and that's like I said, that's more of a team thing. But what you can do is just see, okay, he's coming out of door right now. I need to go with him. I need to put myself in a position where we're going to fight this guy together. And you didn't, and you got killed. So just give that, you know, think about that at all times. When you see a, uh, a teammate doing something or you're doing something and say, hey, uh, Mercs, I'm going to peek this guy. I want you to go with me or flash him, and we're going to do it together so that you can get the trade frag or I can get the trade frag. Either way, there just needs to be a little bit more, a little bit better timing, a little bit more communication, and you will have a much, you will be much more successful in those kind of situations. All right. So here you guys are. Um, last round you guys are getting the bomb down sorry you're getting the bomb down you're in a 3v2 situation teammate just killed the p90 er at um forklift now you have all the time in the world you've just planted the bomb they know that you're there so i understand your logic i need to stay in the site you know so they aren't posted on me and aren't going to get the free frag when i'm running out of the site um but you have to get out of the plant spot you're basically it's a it's just a it's just a bad spot because they're going to run up on you and have the peeker's advantage on you. And you need to just reposition. Quad is a very powerful spot. There's a reason that a lot of clutches happen in that position. Because it's a very, very, very powerful spot. You have so much cover. You have both sides that you can peek. You can run around it. You can do all kinds of cool things. So stay. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that staying in the plant spot right there is what got you killed. But it definitely helped them win the round. So they end up winning the round, tying the game, and you guys go into overtime. The overtime rounds kind of sucked. Uh, whereas it really wasn't much to comment on it. But um, what I would like to have seen you do in that situation is say, hey, whoever your teammate was, I'm not sure who he was. He was alive at the time in the 2v2 situation. Say, hey, stay alive. I'm going to reposition myself. I'm going to go to quad, and you guys are basically going to crossfire. He's going to hide behind forklift or wherever he was, and you're going to play the backside of the quad, and you guys are going to set up a crossfire to try and kill the players as they try and come into the site. Obviously, it wasn't an ideal situation where he was at and you were at, but being in the bomb site and staying where the bomb was planted for that long, it did not help you win that round by any means, and it only, uh, it only negatively affected you in that situation because you're just a sitting target, and you weren't able to get to quad and bait out some shots and find get some information as to where the bad guys were at. So just think about that next time. You get the bomb down. You have lots of time. Your teammates just got the kill on the player at a bomb site. You know that they're going to be rotating. Get yourself into a better post-plant position. You'll hear a lot of pro players talk about post-plant positions and post-plant team play. Having equipment, having flashes, having good smokes, having nades after the plant is very important. Obviously, you guys didn't have anything, but post-plant positions are also very important. And communicating with your teammates in those situations is also very important. So I hope this demo review helped you. Just to recap real quick a few of the things that we went over when playing B, um, bomb sites, B in general, or sorry, bomb sites in general, your main goal is to delay the strategy, delay the players into the site, use your equipment to your advantage, delay them, delay them, delay them. Uh, the more you delay them, the more flustered they're going to get in the situations where they feel like they have to make a play and they have to rush into the site and they have to do all kinds of things to try and get the, win the round. All you have to do is delay them, peek out from one side of the box, shoot some bullets, throw a flash, peek out the other side of the box, maybe kill somebody, maybe you get traded, maybe not, but you still at least get some information and ultimately you're delaying into them into the bomb site. Uh, those three things kind of all work together. Uh, next thing was just working off of your teammates a little bit more. And when they were in situations where they had um, some information as to where guys were at, you just need to be a little bit more aware as to where the bad guys could be so you weren't surprised. And um, the next thing was your timing, uh, hitting with hitting uh, sites with players. You guys just need to work a little bit more or work a little bit closer together so you guys can get trade kills and um, just you'll have much more success in those kind of situations. So hope you enjoyed this demo review, guys. Again, this was Casey Foster with NetcodeGuys.com. If you like the demo review, comment and subscribe below. Uh, let us know what you think. And um, if you want to have your demo reviewed, go ahead and send it in at NetcodeGuys.com. 
Uh, you guys can use discount code YouTube for 25% off a of Netcode Premium. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks, guys.